from the big yeah. I feel like we have a very serious Mike Boogie this time. You know, season two Mike Boogie was very fun loving, you know, was wearing like the crazy jerseys. This season it was all about alliances, protecting Frank. You know, yeah. were you different? Um, yeah, I think I was. You know, I uh, I had a son <laughs> nine months earlier. Yeah. And so being a father was something really different. I hope that my fun loving side still was there. Right. But um yeah, I think uh, you know, I grew up. I mean I was younger when I did the show the first time and I was older now. I, I'm not gonna say I was a kid, but right. I was I was thirty and then I was forty two and so I uh, maybe came across a little differently, but I hope that I still entertain people because that's all I care about with the show. You know what's amazing to me about Chilltown and Will and you is the fact that like even the last time you guys played, everybody was like, "Oh, we got to get rid of Chilltown," and again, everybody's like, "Oh, we got to get rid of Mike Boogie." You know, like he's won before. And is your social game that good that like you can just get people to forget? Because I feel like people like you a few days into it, whereas going in, Janelle's like, "We got to get rid of him." Yeah. Next. The problem this year was, you know, Janelle had a. Uh, she had it in for me, and she uh, sort of, I don't know what the word is, but she created a culture in there, which was like, let's get rid of Mike. Yeah. And normally, I go in there, and I'm just fun, and people, you know, want to hang out. This year, it was just like, she had it in for me, and she got the others to think that way as well. And especially being with Frank, who was such a big target. What was it about Frank? When I'm watching the show, I'm like, why does Boogie like this guy so much? So what was it about Frank that just stood out to you right from the face? You know, I think playing the show two times before with Will, and I had that alliance where it was undeniable. Yeah. I knew he would never cross me. And then I met Frank, and I was like, he's the exact same way. You right. know? And I knew he would never cross me. He was just such a good person who I knew I would be friends with after. Things were just non-negotiable with me and Frank in the sense that, you know, Dan was trying to get me to cross him and I just, I just wasn't going to do it. And it was to my detriment, but I'm, I'm happy that I made that pressure. Is there, you know, when, when most people play Big Brother, they think that the alpha male has got to go first, you know? That's what I couldn't understand. I was like, you know, Boogie, if he wants to lay low under the radar, pick the girls. Don't pick the guy that's going to win everything. Yeah, well, you know, when I drafted my team, I wanted a very diverse uh, uh, group of people, and I got that. I had, I, I had what I thought was a perfect team. Jen was sort of the social player that could lay back. Ian was the intellectual guy that I didn't think people would, you know, really think of the threat. threat. Yeah. yeah, and then I had the bond, which was great. Right. And um, so I, I was super happy with my team as a coach. You know, does it bother you at all? Because, like, in terms of, like, the players coming into the game, like, you obviously voted against it, but, you know, I felt like you were in a great position to win that 100000 So what was that like when you found out that all the other coaches voted for it and you didn't? Um, you know what? I didn't know they all voted for it until I got out of the house. Yes. Um, I knew Dan was going to vote for it, but it's sort of uh, an unfair twist in a way that, I mean, I did a month's worth of work, exactly. and I kept all three of my players, but... Dan only had one person left. Of course, he's going to press the button. Yeah. You know, it was, it was sort of a twist that I just, you know, yeah. obviously I wasn't a fan of. Um, and I know you spoke highly of Mike Ian. What did they should be fans? Is that still happening a lot? <laughs> um, what did you think of Dan's game? Oh, Dan's game was amazing. I mean, he played a great game. He, uh, that's another reason I didn't press the reset button. Yeah. So I'm like, there's no way these kids are going to let us hear that money, you know? Him and I had already won once, and I mean, look what a great game he played and how bitter the jury was. I mean, Dan, Dan probably deserved that money, but look at the vote. Yeah. These kids were bitter, and they weren't letting him anywhere near. And your relationship with him is good, man. Oh, yeah, I'm cool with Dan. I'm cool with everybody. I, I go on that show. We throw it down in there, but after the fact, it's, it's not real life in there, you know. Sometimes you watch a show and they think it is real life, but it, it's not. And when you walk out, you can't be bitter. It's like everyone's it's so surprised how I reacted to Ian double-crossing me, but I'd be the biggest hypocrite ever if yeah. I had a problem with it, because that's what I did to everybody in the seasons before, so. Did you underestimate him, you know, when he was wearing the dog suit, when he was taking the slot, did you underestimate him? I definitely underestimated yeah. I mean, when you look at someone like me who's played the game three times, and I get fooled like that, you gotta, 
You gotta tip the cap to the kid. I mean, he was unreal. I treated him like uh, almost like parents, the way they treat their kids. <laughs> like you just talk around them and you don't even like think about them. Right. But, uh, he made a great alliance, and uh, I give him credit. I mean, Frank and I were looking for an alliance, and no one wanted to work with us, but he had found a great alliance. And they went to the end. So. And, and we're almost done. I have to ask you one question about what my favorite reality show is, because it just aired in Canada pretty recently. Famous Food. I <laughs> I love Famous Food. Yeah. I was glued to the TV. So what did you think about that show? Was it a good experience? Um, yeah, it was a great experience. I loved blending my two worlds, which yeah. was, you know, the restaurant world as well as, uh, you know, being on camera and on TV. Um, unfortunately, the ratings weren't, weren't that great in the U.S., and so we didn't get a second season. But it was but a one season. I mean, it was a great one season yeah. show, right? Yeah, it was, it was great. And I hope many people appreciate it more in Canada than they did. <laughs> uh, and, and we're here for Big Brother Canada. You know, obviously everybody here would love some insight from one of the game's greatest players about what they should do on Big Brother Canada. Any advice? Um, to get on the show? Or to, to um, what about uh, first to get on the show and meet when you're in the house? Well, to get on the show, you know, I'm just telling everyone here today who's auditioning, just go for it. Like, there's nothing you can say that, that uh, will be held against you. And don't be shy. Um, be yourself, but know your role. Like, if you're the slutty sorority girl, be the slutty sorority <laughs> I like how you go with the slutty sorority yeah, girl yeah, first. Right, 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 right top of the head. Yeah, if you're, if you're the party guy, be the party guy. And um, as far as getting on the show, there's... There's uh, no real formula for it, but I just say, um, wow, she's hot. Um, <laughs> I just say, uh, stay out of conflict. So that, that's really hard to do. Yeah. But, um, the American version, you know, people fight and yeah. everyone tries to get involved in the fray, and I say, just lay back and chill. Don't, don't get too involved in the conflict. Chill town. Chill yeah. town. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so right. much.